We have some social media questions. W. David Hancock via Twitter wants to know, if marijuana was legalized, what kind of sobriety tests would be mandated? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, no one knows. you don't know because you, you do those those field sobriety tests and then there are, are police officers. I mean, you guys know this better than I do, but police officers are trained to look for narcotics. Mm. I've been to those field sobriety tests. I've actually gone to those police stops and uh, there's a different testing method, different training involved in looking for somebody who might be on prescription medication or something like that. So that would have to be uh, there have to be Doctor, one established testing. Dr. Uh, Mian Smith on Twitter asks, is there a link between smoking weed and schizophrenia? If, whether there's a link between smoking weed and schizophrenia, what there is a link between is predisposition to schizophrenia and schizophrenia-like symptoms and having psychosis come up as a result of smoking. So it's not that marijuana has been shown to cause more schizophrenia, but there's but a higher li liability of those symptoms coming up from people smoking. Within the statistical window that also applies to prescription drugs. You know, it, as, you Depending know, on which prescription it, drugs. Sure, that's like what I mean. Disease. But still, well, that, that window is so small it fits well within, let's no, say, no, your no, doctor. That's, yeah. that's not actually true. Forty percent increase in psychotic like symptoms for people who are predisposed to schizophrenia um, and smoke marijuana. Rose now again, is, schizophrenia is in one percent of the population. Right. Forty, 40 percent increase I mean. makes it one four four. Rosie but, Stefanato's I mean. nap writes, I offer the phrase, stop the war on drugs and you'll reduce gun violence. Do you think the phrase applies to legalizing marijuana or all illegal drugs? I think, you know, I think I have a unique view on this, having been on both sides of the, of the equation for this. Um, I never dealt in a lot of marijuana because it is big and smells, so it's hard to store. <laughs> um, but I knew a lot of people who were and who did that um, for a living. And I'll tell you, people make a lot of money selling this stuff, and we all know about the drug cartel problems in, in Mexico. If people expect the drug cartels to get out of the business because all of a sudden you move marijuana, they knew wrong. They'll find other ways to make money. They're about making money. They don't care about the marijuana. Uh, smoking marijuana rates in Mexico are actually pretty low. They're, they're bringing it up to here. But are we going to have street violence and that same drug cartel violence around selling of marijuana if it becomes legal here? Again, I think that's a question we can't answer until we see what take, happens. Uh, you take a drug that is used by a large swath of people who, by the way, will not necessarily move to another drug. That's the idea of the gateway concept. Mm -hmm. that, that is not the case any more than, you know, again, you can track beer and apple pie to the same arc of usage that al almost all of these apply to. When you take pot out of that equation, you, will, you basically relegate the, the violent aspects, the tighter drugs, to the real class A heroin, methamphetamines, and these kind of drugs which is a much narrower usage part of the population. And there, statistically, it will drive down the level of violence and the level of permeance in neighborhoods and, and the like.